What's going on, everybody? Welcome to 10 Minutes on Brand. I'm Will Strawn, Chief Growth Officer here at Focus Lab. I'm really excited to have Bill Kinney, Chief Creative Officer here at Focus Lab with me again today. What's going on, Bill? What's up? What's up? What's up? Dude, we're back at it again for another 10 minutes on brand. Can you believe it? Here we go. I'm ready. Dude, the first one was so fun. We were like, we're doing a second and a third, and we're just going to keep them rolling. Okay, so for today's topic, what I want to talk about is brand rollouts. This is a topic that comes up a lot with our partners, with prospective partners, everybody that, you know, brands are much bigger than just what you walk away with at the end of the project. A lot of it depends on a rollout. So I've got some pretty solid questions that I want to talk about today with you because you are very much a leader when it comes to guiding our partners through thinking through rollouts. Um, so with that, should we dive right in? Let's do it. Here we go. All right. So Bill, this, I think this question is going to be for anybody considering a rebrand or going through a rebrand with us or, or with another agency. But what is the biggest piece of advice you would give someone when starting to think about a brand rollout? Right. Uh, so there's a lot of things to think about, but if I had to narrow it down to one kind of like overarching, this is how you should think about a rollout, I would say that it is wildly important to remember that a brand rollout is not a logo reveal. It's not a, hey, look at our new colors. It, that's an easy misperception. That's an easy trap to think about, oh, we're in a branding project. It's a visual identity project. And now I have a new logo. So the, the rollout is about revealing the new logo. Mm -hmm. We work with our partners to, to have them take a step back from that, a, 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 a broader view of the landscape and say, this is about the new version of your business, of your organization rolling out. Meaning you are rolling out much more than your visual identity. There's going to be very likely new positioning, new stance on what your offering is, um, maybe new core values, maybe um, vision, mission, purpose, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like those are the big overarching themes that you wanna make sure come across, right? So you lead with a story, you lead with a narrative. One thing that we notice over time is that these best in class brands oftentimes rally people to a cause greater than themselves. I love the mindset. Like I love when you have these rollout presentations because it's always like our clients are like, oh yeah, we love this. And then they leave and their eyeballs are just like, it's like the amount of information <laughs> or they're like, all right, it's time. Yep. Let's start thinking about this now. It's like yeah, even before that was they see the way first more than we were already planning for. <laughs> yeah, so, and that is an important part. And you know this, leading uh, the growth team and being in a lot of those early calls with potential new partners, um, trying to explain to them even that their scope of work is not just a, a logo exercise, right? Like, well, why do we need this amount of strategy or why do we need positioning work? But we already think how, we know how we're positioned, but let's look at that. Let's tweak it. Let's make sure it is locked tight. Maybe we don't think we need brand story. What is brand story, right? So we're, we're trying to almost like educate them mm -hmm. even in the sales portion. Yeah. And we're adding that into the project. And then we are amplifying that at the back end with the rollout to say, now all those things we worked on, this is what we lead with. I think my next question, I want to talk about a little bit uh, the other side of thinking through the rollout. So what are some of the like most common fears that we help our partners process, maybe like pre or even post launch that they're going to come up against? So again, there, there are a variety of challenges and fears, but if I were to distill it down to one thing, I think the, the easy surface level fear, which I feel like is easy to get past, is this whole idea of will everybody inside our organization love it? Will everybody outside of our organization mm -hmm. love it? And those are two separate battles. Yeah. Um, for some companies, that's a very easy battle. The current brand slash visual identity comms might actually be so wrong from the company's mission and, and, and very outdated that any change there is going to be extremely welcomed yeah. internally. Um, some companies have a, what they would consider still very much like a strong brand with equity that they're going to have some pushback internally like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't like this new version of us. And, and that is, again, why it's important to make this not about a logo or a color 
or, or a communication style. It's draw people to the story, draw them to the greater vision, and then align those things to that. Mm. It is more likely that it, they will easily be bought into the vision and mission and where you're going. That's more aspirational. And then they are less tied to personal bias of, well, do I like that type of logo versus this type of logo? So mm-hmm. um, we talk through that when I do my brand rollout presentations uh, with our partners. And, you know, I just try to get them understanding of, listen, this is a thing. It doesn't mean you have to vet all the new visuals and in comms and all that it, within the entire organization. You have a small team working on this. Um, they are the trusted voice on this project yeah. and, you know, we make decisions for the organization and, and you just trust in those decisions. Then there's the, so, th- so then you do that, you roll it out internally, okay. you get up there, you get your team inspired, take it off of the logo. Um, obviously share the logo and then have all that fun too. Uh, right. then you have the external, that's usually where the bigger fear is mm-hmm. because we live in an internet based world. And people on the internet that we never get to see have a lot to say. Uh, so, so that's just another dilemma. And at this point, it's, it's probably easier for us 10 years in now, the company's 10 years old, to say, don't worry about it. It's something that you're going to see, you're going to hear. There's certainly going to be somebody out there that says, oh, I've seen that before. Oh, this thing looks like this other thing. Oh, I hate that. That thing is so dumb. It's just... It's, it's really irrelevant and it's not worth getting lost in. A really good example of this is Airbnb. We all know Airbnb. We know Airbnb with a little A loop-de-loop in the middle. When they first rolled that out, they got just railroaded, like smashed over. Mm-hmm. This is, this looks like this. This looks like that. You stole this over here. It's the dumbest thing. It, it, it looks inappropriate, et cetera. And it, and it it kind of like persisted for a very long time. So much so you could have seen a case for them maybe stepping back and rethinking it. We never suggest doing that. Stick to your guns. Airbnb absolutely stuck to their guns. They didn't, I don't even think they even entertained the conversation. I never saw any responses. I never saw any, this is why we did this. It, It just like, they went back to business and focused on their vision and, and, and their future and they yeah. didn't get caught up in who likes what. Um, so, so we do a lot of that talking to with our partners to say like, don't even worry about it. It's, yeah. it's just, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. If you try to avoid that, we're playing the wrong game, you know? Yeah. If the games would make everyone happy at the end of the day, no one will be happy. And like right. with that Airbnb example, they leaned into the cause that they were building, which was that sense of belonging and they were kind of like, well, if you don't want to buy into this vision, then maybe you're not the right person for us, right. you know, and right. that's okay. And ultimately they grew and they grew and they grew. And you see, we always ask people like, what are some best of breed brands to you and Airbnb now years, always years and years, but they're always, always getting name dropped in there because they built something bigger than themselves. You always have this one slide. It's like haters are going to hate no matter what. And it's just yeah. breaking through that noise and, and standing strong. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think, um, you know, some organizations we work with, um, they might be more people pleaser, mm-hmm. right? So their personality style is going to have a harder time with that. Oh, everybody doesn't love it. And I, and I am generally one of those type of people. I want to please everybody. Yeah. But at a certain point, you realize um, that is actually more of a negative than a positive in that type of situation, mm-hmm. right? Like it, it, the goal with the rebrand is not to please everybody. It's to get aligned on where you're going and build everything you can within your brand around that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. More people will experience your brand in the future than ever experienced you in the past, right? And that's with a majority, because we it's pretty rare we work with companies that are 50 or 100 years old. Right. Maybe you can't say that for Coca-Cola, but I don't think they would rebrand at a substantial level. But more people will experience experience your brand in the future than ever did in the past. So don't let the past dictate what you say in the future and how you communicate your brand's values. So um, yeah, it's so right. true. Right. You're worried about what people right now feel. What about the hundreds of thousands of people you've right? never had a touch point with? They have nothing to judge at that point. It's the new you. And that's the you you want them to see. Yeah. Like, trust me, I probably said a lot of crazy stuff when I was 20 or 21. <laughs> <Right. you know? laughs> and <laughs> The, that's not me now. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm married. I got two kids and who knows, probably the things I'll be saying in 10 years, I'll look back now and be like, what in the hell is I talking about? Yeah. But you know, 
the opportunity is there for brands and it's all about recrafting the narrative like you keep mentioning. Um, all right, so we're running short on our 10 minutes. I think the last question that I've got for you today is for anyone going through a rebrand or considering a rebrand, when do you start planning your rollout strategy? So over time we have learned, uh, I guess quickly, uh, that you cannot wait until the back end of the project to start mm -hmm. to think about brand rollout. I think when our company was young and really small and you know potentially even naive in some ways as we're kind of like learning and growing, it's just, it feels natural. Oh, we talk about it towards the end of the project and we start to plan for it that way. Now we know it absolutely to be true. We should be having a brand rollout discussion as early in the project as, as possible, quite honestly. We have projects now that might kick off on one day and then within the next couple weeks of a three to four month project, I'm already scheduled to give the brand rollout presentation mm -hmm. to the team because there is so much to be accounted for and so much planning that needs to, to happen that you have to be way out ahead of that. And that planning will, will actually ultimately equal uh, a good rollout strategy. Uh, everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing when they're supposed to be doing it. It gives people time to think about that narrative as it's forming and how that might manifest in the rollout. Um, so really it's like ASAP as crazy as that sounds yeah. sometimes. So this last brand rollout presentation I gave, uh, it was this week on Tuesday, that client has not even received their first round of visuals yet that yeah. comes tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm giving a brand rollout presentation, talking about all these things that none of them have even happened within their project. That's how early uh, yeah. that we do that. And it, it is important, especially you got a large organization, you got a team of a couple thousand people, tons of moving parts, things need to be audited. And that is so time consuming. You can't get to the back end in three weeks left and then plan all that. No right. way. And you only get one chance at a rollout, right? That's it. Once, once the cat's out of the bag, you can't, you can't hit the reset button. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't Mario Brothers, you know? Um, so I love that. So Bill, this conversation was fantastic. You know, I hope anyone out there that's considering a rebrand or that's going through one re right now with Focus Lab or anyone else um, that, they, that they hear this because this is, the, the rollout is so important yeah, and you so have to take it serious. Well, awesome, Bill. Well, thanks for your time today. Guys, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If there's a topic you would like us to cover in an upcoming week, let us know. Um, and Bill, I'll see you around. I think I've got meetings with you later. Who knows? See you um, out there. But we'll send you guys out and we'll see you guys next time.